we have um, hundreds of ideas that come from customers and we haven't got the time nor the resources to put these ideas into operation. So um, a while ago we thought it might be a good idea to see if we could actually um, engage some third party developers to do this because we, as I said, we didn't have the time and resources to do all of this ourselves. We'd love to, but um, in the fast moving world of e-commerce it's virtually impossible to do that. So we decided to help them by creating um, a Tesco.com API that does all the, the basic and, and core features of the uh, grocery service. So uh, logging in a customer, giving them their stores information such as their customers' favorites, um, the range for that store, which averages around 20 odd thousand, but it does vary from store to store. Um, and by category or by barcode number or by typing in the word chocolate or any other text search. Um, and then the ability to add to the basket the products that come back. So three, uh, basic but very important areas and entwined with that is listing let's say customers favorites special offers um, more like this that sort of thing uh, so basically the, the um, I like to use the word abstraction so we have a very complicated grocery engine but the API is a very simple abstract version of that engine that makes it very easy to uh, for third-party developers to write an application for whatever device that fits in with um, the, the desire of that uh, developers need to write an application so, what, what kind of application do we expect from this? Well, uh, we've got quite a few. So um, the, the stuff that's been coming back to me is that there's quite a few sites which are, uh, these are third-party websites that are going to be specialising in certain ways. So, for example, websites that specialise in kosher food, websites that specialise in food for those that need to have um, products which are free from particular ingredients, if you have an allergy, for example. Um, there's a couple of charities who are, are creating... Um, a very accessible version of our site. Now, our site is accessible, but this is designed for people who've got different types of disability. So, for example, um, they have um, the inability to move their limbs, so they have special software that operates the, the computer. But if you write a, a program that sits on the computer especially for the technologies they're using, they can do their home shopping. And what's important about uh, this for disabled people is it gives them a level of independence that they didn't have before. Then, of course, you've got the iPhone application. There are quite a few iPhone applications of varying sorts coming out. Um, um, but there are loads of other smartphones coming out as well. And again, we won't have the time to do all these. So what we're going to do, uh, and the party developers are already ready are writing applications, whether it's Java or whatever, for their favourite smartphone. And um, what's important um, about them doing it, I mean, what's in it for them, is basically um, they have been able to join our affiliate scheme as a result, which means to say that they will make money for every new customer they bring, uh, about five pounds actually, for every new customer that they bring to our service. And then uh, a small micropayment for every checkout that either their application does in full or contributes to, so, um, which is a, a new area that we're doing. So it's, it's uh, uh, engaging them, it's not going to be, you're not going to get rich quick on this sort of thing, but basically it will help those people who have got, um, they do, they do stuff outside business hours, their own, their own specialised programming skills, and, and help them to write applications and make money from them basically. How hard or easy was this to, to establish this kind of thinking in the um, company? It was, um, it's been fairly easy. Um, the, the, the main challenge has been allowing Tesco to consider the idea of somebody being between us and the customer, us Tesco and the customer, um, something getting in the way of our brand. Um, now we realise that uh, this is an issue. Um, and there are some terms and conditions that developers have to fulfill and we do have the ability to turn them off if there's a problem. But um, we, what was convincing was the fact that uh, we don't have the time nor the resource to write for these uh, different devices, different websites. Um, we know that there are lots of people who do have the skills and experience and that could make money from this way. So basically the balance tipped from one way to the other. Um, and that our only rule in the terms of conditions is that, that uh, each developer must make it very clear that they have to support the application and not Tesco. So they're not allowed to use the word Tesco in their the title of their product, uh, their application, but they are allowed to use the word powered by the Tesco API. So that customers can at least see what the source of this is. It's always easy for technology companies to get developers to, to, to build this application. Yes. Um, how is your strategy to, to really get them to do this? Um, it's um, uh, it has, it's actually been quite plain sailing. Lots of, comp lots of developers do want to work with Tesco on, on various things, and we work with um, a couple of universities as part of their graduate schemes in order to help developers write stuff as part of you know, the, their studies. 
and um, so we've actually found that the door has been open and as we have more than 300 developers who are registered and um, lots of them are writing to me um, itching to get their applications out as soon as the BTO API is ready and we get customers onto the new system then they're out the door and they, they, they can use these things so it's it basically um, the marketing for this has been fairly viral really so um, I have a, a, a Twitter account called Tech for Tesco which um, I just let everybody know what I'm doing and that's helped um, I have a blog as well which does the same thing and um, both of those have allowed it's reached the right sort of people and we work with the IT and, the, and, and importantly the creative magazines in, in the UK because um, it's not just a geek thing although I mean I, I'm a real geek here um, it, the important thing about um, getting things in front of customers is that you have a decent application that's very easy to navigate and it's much about design and the thought that's gone into that and so um, there are a majority of developers, but there are also a significant number of designers, and some of them have actually come together to, to, to put these things together, and I think it's very important that the design is there. Um, we're going to use the kind of... Um, uh, it's this sort of evolution by natural selection with uh, these applications. Uh, the idea will be that uh, a developer might write a good idea but not a particularly brilliant implementation of, of an idea um, but other developers will take that on and move it forward um, or they'll get different versions of the same application so we, we like, want to encourage this kind of evolution of applications so that they're what customers are looking for and of course the, the, the most successful applications will make the most money for their developers so there's, there's a lot of, a lot of um, ability for developers to think through the design and to make their application really outstanding from day one you discussed it in your blog, so the competi competitors could look at the applications and, and the things. Yes. What, what's your uh, perspective on this? We, we don't mind. Um, th there are a lot of, uh, actually our competitors are innovative in themselves uh, in different ways. And um, I, I've, I'm encouraging this, this kind of ecosystem to be, to be developed. Um, we have some uh, competitors who have created, one of them created an iPhone application, which is very good. And uh, you can have an iPhone application, which will hopefully will compete alongside it. Um, but there are other specialist phones which um, will, will be first on simply because the developers will be using it for that. So, but I'm encouraging competitors. I, I, don't want, I, want, I don't want to force customers to Tesco just because we're the only people on their phone. I want our competitors on that phone, and, and we prove ourselves by being, you know, the, the good old-fashioned best service, best delivery, that sort of thing, um, and decent prices, not just because they can't go to anybody else on their particular phone, which I think is important. You talked about the fourth screen. Um, yes. What's this, and what, it's, what do it's, you it's a It's kind of a, a new thing that's happened in the UK, um, and I'm, I'm quite sure in Europe and, and the States as well. But this is the concept of um, a screen which does one particular specialised job really well. And, it, and it, unlike uh, the other three screens, the TV set, which is always being used for watch TV shows, the laptop or computer, which is being used for all, you know, all kinds of things, and the mobile phone, which is out and about, the idea of the fourth screen is it sits in one place in the living, it, well, in, in the home somewhere, and normally these are um, intelligent versions of picture frames, basically, but they are, they are touch sensitive, um, and you can do all kinds of different things, such as adjust a calendar, stream media from your PC, um, look at the weather and the news and traffic information, based on widgets which are on these devices. And it would be great to have, for example, a, a Tesco home shopping application on these devices. Um, and what seems to be good is that the four screens are finding their places in the kitchen because they've got calendar and because they've got photos, they're kind of replacing what, what some people do on their fridge door by like sticking magnetic stuff, you know, all the, all the paintings from your kids and everything go on the fridge door and all the reminders. Um, with the um, four screen, that's, they're, they're what's designing them so they can actually put all this information into there. That means that the designers of the four screen are wanting them in the kitchen and that's where we'd love to have Tesco and shopping as well, as you can imagine. Is this something you're thinking of, or are there really um, plans? That no, it's something that we're thinking of at the moment. Um, and um, we, I talk loudly about it because uh, um, there are third-party developers who might be watching this who will be able to go, ha ha. So um, there are, there are um, as these as these devices make their way onto the market, which I think in, in 2010 is going to be quite a big thing. Intelligent picture frames, so things that start by being picture frames, but you end up finding that they do a lot more. And we need a developer base that will support them going forward. And um, so I'm going to do everything I can to allow development for So you place. would be happy to help them to use them? Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.